God damn you, Absumo, you are going to make me go broke. So what am I talking about? Well, the deals over on AppSumo at the moment, there are some amazing ones. For me though, generally AppSumo can be a little bit hit and miss, but I have nabbed some great tools on there and some that have become total shelfware. Just don't use them. But what I'm talking about today though, it just isn't that. In fact, it's something I've been using previously and was pretty surprised and happy to see pop up on AppSumo earlier today. So what exactly is it? is WP Compress, an online service that you can use to either locally compress your website images or, more importantly, use their CDN or Content Delivery Network to compress and deliver your images to your visitor's browser. The best thing is, it makes doing this an absolute breeze. In this video, I'll give you a brief demo and an overview on how it works. Now, this is far from a tutorial, it's more of a quick look. If you'd like a tutorial on how to set it up though, let me know in the comments and if enough people are interested, I'll put a video together for you covering that topic. As always, the link to the AppSumo deal is in the description. It is an affiliate link, so if you choose to use that, I do get a small commission. If you prefer not to, no hard feelings. However, if you do, thank you very much for your support. It's a win-win, you pay nothing more, and I get a small commission. Let's start off by taking a look at the offer over on AppSumo for WP Compress. Now you can see this starts currently at $39. So if we scroll down through all the bump until we get to the plan features and everything, you can see this is where we're gonna find out the tier system. So the $39 tier gives you all of the above features, which are things like universal JavaScript, real-time image optimization, it's a fast hybrid CDN, adaptive images for different devices, automatically generating WebP images, lazy loading, all the kinds of things that you'd want from an optimization tool. So if we take a look at the license tiers, you can see that the first license tier at $39 gives you 250,000 optimization credits per month. That moves up to a, well, I can't say a double stack because they've kind of changed things now on AppSumo. You've got tiers as opposed to stacking. So $39 gives you 250,000 optimization credits, whereas jumping up to the tier two gives you a million optimization credits right the way up to tier four, which gives you up to 5 million optimization cr credits. You'll see if you jump into license tier two or four, you get some extra options. So for example, with tier two, you get unlimited CNAME domains. And with tier four, you get unlimited CNAME domains, white labeling add-on. Great if you want to use this with clients, if you're an agency or you just have clients you want to work with and monthly client quotas, which is a great way of being able to allow a certain number of credits per client so you can dole this out as you need to as you take clients on board and you find out the kinds of levels of support that they need with optimization, bigger sites, more traffic, those kinds of things. So that's the offer. Let's hop over and take a look at the website itself. And this is wpcompress.com. And you can see if we take a look at the standard pricing on here, you've got personal, professional and agency. And as you can see, the optimization credits gives you 100,000, 1 million and 5 million. You've got some extra options based upon which plan you go for, and you can see that will give us different pricing structures. So for example, if we get this, you can see it's $99 per month down to $9 per month. So within the space of four months, if you went for the personal $39 plan, you've already made your money back on it and you're getting an extra 150% on top of the monthly allowance that you have for optimization credits by using the AppSumo deal. So it's already pretty compelling. But how does it work? Is it any good? And let's take a look at what the dashboard is like inside the actual app itself. So if we hop over to the app dashboard. This is what you get when you log in. Now at the moment, this is just sample data because obviously I don't have any site set up, nothing at all. And I've got the professional plan. So if we hop back over to the plans and pricing, there's my professional plan, which gives me a million uh, sort of monthly credits kind of thing. Now in this example, I've had this for a little while and you can see I've got a plan of 25 gigabytes and I can allocate different things. So let me just refresh that a second. And you can see now what we get is this welcome kind of screen, which allows us to sort of walk through, which is a nice way of introducing you how to do in things. So we'll just say, let's get started. And you can see now what I can do is I can set up how I want to work, sort of like dole out the credits or the space or the amount of traffic that I've got. So in this example, like I say, I'm working on gigabytes. If you use the AppSumo one, you might find this is gonna work slightly differently, but it's gonna work in a very similar fashion, just the values may be different. So we have two different sections inside here. For this example, I've got live sites and I've got 25 gigabytes available to me. 
So what I can do is I can set this up to be shared and it'll just share it out amongst all of the different sites that I add in. However, I can also set this up to give exactly what I want on a site by site basis. So for example, if I want to just allow one gigabyte to a lower traffic website, I can select one gigabyte and I just hit continue. And you can see what this does now, it gives me this code that allows me to copy this access key in, download the plugin for this, install that on my site, use the access key, and then that's been linked up to WP Compress. So let's do that. Just gonna copy this from there, and I'm gonna say download the plugin, and that's gonna go ahead and download it for me. And I'm gonna hop over to my test site, and we're gonna install this plugin to see what options we have inside there. Now I've gone ahead, already logged into my test site, and I'm just gonna add this, install it, once that's installed, we should be able to then drop in the API key. So we'll activate this and we'll drop in the API key. Okay, so we're just gonna head over to the settings section and into WP Compress. And you can see all we need to do now is just paste in that license or that key that we've been given. This is gonna confirm our access and then we get a great looking dashboard available to us with all the optimization information for this particular site. There we go, after a few moments, it's been confirmed. We've got everything connected up and we can now just simply hit continue. Okay, so what exactly do we have inside here? Well, this is where we're gonna get the information about what we've got set up, how we've got it set up, the savings we're making and so on. But before I go on ahead and sort of talk about this, let's just quickly cover what WP Compress is actually doing. This isn't working like a lot of other plugins you may be used to where it optimizes the image files permanently on your website and then you, you can, if you want to, store a copy of the originals and you'll then serve up the compressed versions. What this does is it uses global CDNs to store copies of your images in the best format and then output those to the actual person inside their browser based upon their closest location to the CDN network. Hope that makes sense and what's going on. So you may see it to take a little time to sort of show up, but what's happening is your images are not being affected physically on your website. They're all being done sort of remotely on the CDN. So. This all kind of works in a very straightforward fashion and you don't need to even worry about it. What you're gonna get is a compression report and this is gonna give you over a period of time how much you sort of optimized the file sizes before and the file sizes after optimization. And you can see there's a legend at the top, light blues before, dark blues after. And you can see in this example, we're saving a small amount at this point in time. However, we're just using the intelligent optimization level. We can change that if we want to. So if we scroll down underneath the graph, you'll see it's telling us the savings, the optimization, how much the original was, how many assets have been served, how much storage space you've got left and so on. Whether you want to use the live CDN, so what this is gonna do, this is gonna, like I say, store copies of your images on different CDNs around the world. But you can, if you want to, you can disable that and you can store it on your own local system. So you just disable that and now the images are gonna be stored on your local setup. So it's up to you how you want to work. I would generally say going for the live CDN is probably the better option because then you don't have to worry about those images being displayed in the best format. Speaking of formats, there's the optimization level underneath. And you can see if you ever use anything like short pixel or any other tools that optimize images, you'll normally have varying different degrees of optimization or compression. You'll have lossy, lossless, and in this case, you've got lossless intelligence, so it's gonna look at the best way of working, and then ultra, which is gonna give you the highest compression, but probably the lowest quality size. So you can change these if you want to, and you can change them inside here, or in a moment, I'll show you the dashboard where you can change and control all of this remotely. You can then set up what kind of images you want to actually deal with. Retina, obviously for Max. Adaptive images, this is gonna be making sure that the images will adapt based upon the size and the device that's being used to view the actual website. So mobile images are gonna be smaller in size and file size compared to desktop images, which would be larger and higher quality. You can set this up to automatically create WebP versions of your images, and you can also have this lazy load the images, which just basically means it'll only load the images when or just before they come into the viewport of the user or the browser, and that way it just speeds up the load time of your actual website. You then got the option to preserve the EXIF data. Now, most of the time, you probably don't want to worry about EXIF data, and for most users, that's gonna be fine to not worry about it. However, if you're a photographer and this kind of information is invaluable to you, you might be outputting this to show the EXIF data for any particular image you display on your website, then obviously I would recommend turning that on so you retain that functionality. 
If we scroll right up to the top, you can see we've got some advanced settings. And if we hop into there, you can see we have a couple of different things we can configure. So we're not limited to only compressing image files. We can use this to compress JavaScript, serve CD, CSS, external URLs, deferring JavaScript, and so on. So you can enable and disable this. Now, one of the things that can happen when you work with tools that sort of compress and serve uh, sort of JavaScript and CSS remotely, you can sometimes have issues and you could sometimes in rare circumstances potentially lock yourself out of your dashboard. However, because you can control this remotely as well as on the website itself, you should be able to undo that if something happens doing it on the actual uh, WP Compress website itself inside your own dashboard. You've also got the option to serve up your images via your own custom domain as opposed to a standardized domain, sort of like a generated domain for the CDN. Now, for this, you do need to have the tier two or above from AppSumo to get access to this. But if you're not worried about that and you don't have a huge amount of resources needed, then you could probably just do away with it and just use the tier one. But that option's there should you want it. Let's hop back to the plugin. What we're going to do is we're going to hop over now into the dashboard of the site itself. And you can see this. Let me just refresh this to make sure I've got fresh data inside here. So this is now taking a look at our account management. So you can see we've got our website underneath. And you can see this has given us the past seven days in April and all time, the compression, optimized assets, and so on. And this is going to give you information across your plan. So you can see as you go through, this is going to give you more information, more data and it'll become more and more useful. You can add more websites inside here, or you can search for websites if you've got multiple different sites all set up inside your plan. So this kind of gives us that top-down view of all of these sites, all your resources for your account. But let's take a look at one of the websites. So let's just go and take a look at what we just added. And this is now gonna give us just information about this specific website. So what we've got inside here is just a chart that's gonna give us information solely about this website, not everything. And you can see this basically mimics the information you've got inside the dashboard of WordPress when you've got the plugin installed. So you're kind of getting the same kind of thing that your clients could potentially see. But as I said, you can also control the information inside here. So you can control the optimization level, the type of images, the uh, options to hide WP Compress itself. So if you didn't want your client to even see this, you could just en enable that. You can also control the serving of the JavaScript, the CSS, and all those kinds of things, all directly inside here. And you can also quickly and easily up the monthly client quota based upon the live and any local information. And if you need to add one-time credits, which, for example, your site might be having a huge amount of traffic, you could be running a launch, and you want to make sure you've got enough credits to allow that launch to have headroom, you can add one-time credits, and this is going to go towards your month and you can add those on, and then once they run out, they've kind of gone. So that's quite useful to see you can do that very easily inside you. Okay, so what else do we have? We can visit the admin, so we can jump straight into the admin for this particular site. We can also view reports, and you can also automate reports going off to your clients. So if you had reports that you wanted to send out to your client to let them know how well this is working for them and how much they're saving and so on, you could do that. And you can see you can view a full report. This is going to give you all the information about this particular website, which you can download. And you can take a look at your weekly report, which would have different information inside there. So that's quite cool to see we've got those options. You can also come in and you can edit this and you can see we can set up email reporting inside here if you want to assign logos and all those kinds of things. So if you are white labeling this and you're sending info to the client, you basically should be covered with this depending upon the plan that you've got. You can also quite easily come in and just change anything inside you and it will reflect very quickly inside the front end of the, sorry, inside the back end of the site. So let me just change this from intelligent optimization level to ultra optimization level. And you can see that's updated our settings. And if we hop back over now into our dashboard on our site, we'll refresh this and you can see ultra is set up inside there. So really quick, really easy to see how this all works. But with all of this, what does it actually translate into? Well, I did a test on GT metrics. And this is the test that I did before I run any optimization. So this is where I just basically disabled the plugin and everything has to go with it. Because as we said, these are not stored locally, these are delivered by CDN. As you can see, the site already scores pretty good anyway. But after we did the test with the run the simple optimization, you can see we actually get a slight improvement. 99% on performance, largest content full paint well, that's kind of a lot of the things are sort of like dictated by the speed of the server, the amount of traffic, all those kinds of things. 
But if we take a look at the total blocking time, 5 milliseconds compared to 193 milliseconds with the initial test. Cumulative shift, nothing whatsoever, whereas with the first one, we get a slight amount of cumulative shift. Now, you're probably thinking, well, they're not massive figures, Paul, and is it really worth me investing in something like this? Well, I can't tell you that. I can only give you my own personal experience and my thoughts on it. So the first thing I would say is this site has already been pretty heavily optimized. It uses the Bloxy theme. The images have been compressed and optimized. It's using Gutenberg and uh, stackable blocks. So it's already a pretty lightweight site. If you've got a client, for example, that's uploading images to their website, this takes out the hassle of needing to worry about those being compressed before they're delivered to the end user. Your client doesn't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it. It makes the whole process easier. Plus, I always like a lifetime deal. So if you compare this to the likes of ShortPixel, for example, I think you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. Even the lowest tier with 250,000 optimization credits should be fine for most cases. If you have clients and things like that and you want to give them access to this, probably tier four and above is gonna be the best way to look at doing this. Five million optimization credits per month, plus more if you're kind of going up, I think it's up to 15 million, something like that. That should cover most bases for most users. And there's a lot to like about what WP Compress actually offers. But as always, I can't make your mind up for you. This is something you need to do a little bit of research in. But what I would say is, with anything to do with AppSumo, keep an eye on the reviews, keep an eye on the feedback, let it settle down for a couple of days maybe, and then just take a look at what people are coming back with, with their opinions, with their thoughts, with their reviews, and sort of make a balanced judgment from there. That's what I tend to do. Now, as you can see, the time I've been recording this video, which has probably taken about maybe 20, 25 minutes, we've got four reviews have come in. And so far, they are all five-star reviews or five-taco reviews. So have a read through those. Keep an eye on it in the next couple of days. See if this is kind of something you're interested in. And if you are interested in it and you'd like to support me on the channel, please consider using the link in the description. It's an affiliate link through AppSumo. But if you prefer not to, no hard feelings. But be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you do pick it up. I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback on it. Now, all of the applicable links are in the description below. And if you found the video useful, well, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It really does help me out. If you didn't get value from the video, though, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that works pretty well, too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.